And now here's our reporter, Laura Windsor, with some important information. It was once thought that babies don't feel pain, but now it is known that infants and young children actually feel pain longer and more sensitively, which can affect their brain development. The American Health Journal spoke with Dr. Zayev Kane at Children's Hospital of Orange County about their pain management program. So pain management in children is a, is, it is a new area. Um, it, something that was not recognized before. Uh, until about a decade ago, people thought that the very young children, the infants, the neonates, don't actually feel pain. They saw that their nerve endings were underdeveloped. Um, and indeed, if you look at anesthetic records from 15 years ago or 20 years ago, you'll find out that children that underwent anesthesia got very little pain medication. Um, new evidence emerged, um, and indeed today we know that neonates as early as 28, 29 weeks post-gestation do actually develop their nerve endings, and in fact, they're more sensitive to pain than adults. There are evidence now if you do uh, brain imaging that repeated painful procedure in early childhood, very early childhood, if you don't treat it, will result in brain, in structural brain changes later on. Children who suffer from pain can suffer either from acute pain, which is after surgical procedures, that's after operations, after trauma, um, or these are kids with chronic diseases like cancer, sickle cell disease, um, and abdominal pain and headaches such as that. So you really are dividing it into two separate populations, acute pain management and chronic pain management. We asked Dr. Kane, how do you assess the pain level of a child? So we first established that we need to take care of children because there are bad outcomes later on, right? Things will happen down the years beside the fact that it's painful right there. But that challenges. So here's the first challenge. How do you assess pain in a child? You know, in an adult, you ask them, is it painful? Yes, it hurts me. Well, what do you do with a neonate? What do you do with a 12 months old? They cry. Well, is the cry an indicative of pain or not? So it, there are particular challenges in that area that are not the same as in adults. And that's why it literally became a separate area. Pediatric pain management is different than adult pain management on every aspect you can think about. Pain management is not only about drugs. Uh, pain management is what's called multimodal. It's behavioral, it's psychological, it's about drugs, and it's about regional blocks or blocks that you put in nerves. All of these are different in kids as compared to adults. Kids, you have more psychological work with kids, more behavioral work with kids. Yes, you give the kids drugs as well. Uh, yes, you give the kids blocks as well. But overall, it's different. The diseases, the pain symptoms in kids are also a bit different uh, than as compared to adults. How can parents help their child with pain? Pain is a symptom. You need to find out why do they have pain. So the role as a parent is to ask uh, why do you think it hurts you? Did you sleep on the wrong side? Did you fall? Did you have a fight? How long is it painful? Once they obtain the information, they need to call obviously the pediatrician and to move it to up the chain to find out why is the pain. Because obviously if the child tells you, yeah, I was running and fell down the stairs, okay, so now the question is, did the child break something or not? Uh, how serious is the pain? If the child tells you it's been hurting for the past three weeks and it's getting worse every day, that's a different story. Now you definitely need to go to the pediatrician as soon as you can. So you really need to be the gatekeeper and find out more details about the pain. Medical research will continue to find effective ways to control pain for children, helping them to get back to health and just being kids. For the American Health Journal, I'm Laura Windsor.